Warning, the following video has not been approved by the Comic Code Authority and is intended for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Comic Assassin. It's Friday, it's the day where I usually come at y'all, let you guys know what I picked up this past week, and also do our normal comic book review. We're going to be doing two books this week. Um, a little different, because usually I do two independent books. I'm actually going to be doing a mainstream book this week as well. Um, but yeah, with that being said, first off, I want to give shouts out to everybody who's being affected by this, this Hurricane Dorian that's coming through. Much love, much prayer to all y'all. Hope all y'all made it out safe. So yeah, there's always things going on in this world, so it's always good to take a step back and, you know, just thoughts and prayers out to everybody who's being affected by this thing right now. Um, with that being said, I'm just going to jump into it. Uh, the first book I picked up this week was The Seasoning, number one. Alright, I got the Conjuring cover. I think it's a pretty sweet looking cover. The, I haven't read it yet. The artwork looks pretty freaking good though, so I'm looking forward to reading that. And hopefully Tom King doesn't disappoint us. The next one is Doomsday Clock, 11 out of 12. Now I'll be honest with y'all, I still have, I think, I think two issues prior to this that I still need to read. Just because I was tired of reading the book. And then it coming out like two months later and like just really forgetting what the hell was going on. So I decided that I'm going to wait till issue 12 comes out and then I'm going to read the rest of them back to back to back. That way I can actually enjoy the story. But yeah, Doomsday Clock. I've enjoyed what I've read so far, but man, that that lag in between issues is pretty, pretty bad for me. Uh, the next one, I got House of X, number four. I got that connecting cover right there. And I stand by my word. I, I, I check on these prices on the secondary market, and these connecting covers are the ones that are, are to me, that are heating up beyond any of the other ones. Um, not that I sell books, but if you're speculating, definitely go with these connecting covers. But yeah, I think this one's going for like 16 bucks on eBay right now. Speaking of eBay, man, and I, I'm sorry to divert from showing you my books. But man, this week has been one of those weeks where I've came across at least two like super like too good to be true deals, right? Where you get like you see something that you know is worth a hundred bucks or a group of books for two hundred bucks, and the bid the current bid is only for like seven dollars, and you're like, oh snaps, I'm about to get some good books on the cheap, and so I come in there to do my my last minute prowl to sneak in my bid. And next thing that I know, that seventy dollar book turns into a seventy uh, seven dollar book turns like a seventy dollar book, and like just like that. So came close, but didn't get them. But yeah, man, I like the thrill of the hunt. All right, the next one I got is Absolute Carnage Scream number two. I got that Mark Bagley variant, the connecting cover. So the first one was all right. And then I had to go with my Immortal Hulk 23. You know, when I, when I went into my LCS, they actually had thrown in the wraparound cover. That had the Harpy on there, which is actually a sweet cover. They put that one in my box, and I was like, you know what? No. I have to go with the Alex Ross on that one. All right. Alex Ross has been killing it with these covers. I had to stick with them. Uh, on the image... Got Redneck number 23. I don't know when this issue or when this series is scheduled to end, but like I said, I love me some Redneck. And then I had to do it. I had to do it. When I, for this book, when I w went into my LCS, I told myself I'm going to get cover A. Cover A all day long, but I had to do it. I had to get the Spawn 300, the ASM 300 homage or tribute, whatever you want to call it. Alright, so I picked it up. It is a freaking big book, but I'm going to tell you what, man. For this week, I saw some people leaving the LCS with, like, almost crying. <laughs> I mean, maybe crying is a little bit too much, but they just knew that they spent way too much damn money on comic books. And the reason why is because they were picking up multiple covers of this book, along with all the other books that they wanted. 
And man, uh, this book alone, this this book hurt a lot of people's wallets this week. All right, <laughs> but yeah, I had to pick up the 300 cover. I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I haven't read it yet, but I think the cover is awesome. Uh, the only dollar books I picked up this week were both Punishers. I got this Punisher um, Point of View 4 4. That's one that I needed. And then I got, they had a Punisher Born. This is issue number three. If you have not read the Punisher Born miniseries and you're a Punisher fan, you are doing yourself a disservice, man. The Punisher Born miniseries was freaking awesome. And I think I might actually do another video um, surrounding certain miniseries at some point. But yeah, that's definitely one to check out. Alright, but the two books that I'm going to be reviewing for y'all this week, and once again, they're spoilers. I'm going to be opening up the pages for you. I'm going to let you know what's going on in them. Um, I don't go, you know, pain from pain and, you know, tell you everything, but it, there, there are spoilers. But the first one is Absolute Carnage Symbiote Spider-Man. Now, when I first heard about this story, um, I was intrigued because Symbiote Spider-Man takes place back in, like, when he first gets, when Peter Parker first gets the, the black suit, you know, and these are kind of like the untold stories. So I was interested to see how they were going to tie that in into this, at this new Absolute Carnage stuff that's coming in. First off, I really love that cover art. I think it's really cool, the whole scene with the camera and you got, you know, the black spidey in the lens. I think it's pretty sweet. Um, but it started off something that I wasn't expecting, all right? It has this old time artwork, you know, stuff that we would have seen way back in the day. You know, and basically it's a story about this guy who he's in New York and he's talking about, you know, he heard about all the crime and, you know, people being nervous to visit New York, but he really wanted to see it for himself. And all of a sudden, the black suit gets a hold of him. Somehow, some way, the black suit gets a hold of him and. He goes whipping through the town, and he wakes up in an alleyway, and he thinks he's been mugged. He's like, I have no idea what's going on. Um, like, do I, do I have a concussion? Like, how did I get here? And then the, the black suit goes back off to its host, Peter Parker. Okay? But I thought that was pretty cool they were bringing out some, some, some more of the, the old-time artwork styles. And then it jumps to more present day. Where you got this guy, he's sitting there, he's, obviously he has like a parole hearing. And apparently he used to be a judge. And he, I guess, has just been diagnosed with cancer. So the parole board is like, look, hey, you've been here for years, we want to give you this chance because, you know, we know that you're terminally ill. Would you like to tell us the story of what happened? And that's basically what this issue is, is him telling you the story of what's happening. And it pretty much goes back to where... He was tells a story about him visiting New York. He sees all the hero, uh, see all the heroes. He sees Spider Man. He sees Thor. He sees Captain America, and he, and he talks about you know. Eventually, it just became like an everyday thing. You were seeing heroes all around the place. But then that came into the time when he blacked out, and he went to the doctor. The doctor can't find out anything wrong with him. Doesn't know what's happening. Anyway, so he's leaving the doctor's office, and I guess his son is picking him up. And him and the son are going to go get a bite to eat, right? And they're all, they're, they're kind of, you know, chit-chatting back and forth. You know, the, the son's like a college student. He wants to, he wants to be a, uh, like a freelance, what was it, a freelance writer? Yeah, he wants to be a writer, but of course the dad wanted to be a lawyer. So they're talking about that kind of stuff. But they get into this place to, to order their food. And this woman is just raised in hell. Right? She is raising hell. She's screaming that she wants her damned breakfast burrito. Give her her burrito. Right? And she is pissed off. And she just won't stop. Like, hey, we, we quit serving breakfast, you know, like 10 minutes ago. Anyway, she gets super pissed off. She, she knocks out the manager. She knocks out somebody else. Throws a cop through the window. Anyway, they arrest her. But this guy's a judge. And lo and behold, when she goes to court, she's in his courtroom. And he saw the whole thing happen. And he's like, you know, I probably should have recused myself. But honestly, I was kind of a witness at the same time. 
And basically, he pretty much throws the book at her. He's like, you know, we're going to hold you with no bond. You know, and that's that. So, then the father he's, is with the son. The son's giving him a ride home. He's like, you'll never guess that woman that we saw that caused that big scene at the restaurant. She was in my courtroom. Blah, blah, blah. And she called him something when she was getting taken out of the, the, the courtroom. She called him a slithy tove. And he's like, how do I know that from? And the son was like, quoted the verse, which was um, the Jabberwocky. Right? So they're getting home, and all of a sudden, the woman is actually the white rabbit. So she makes her escape from jail, and she's there to do a little payback. Right? She pulls a gun on the judge, and the son steps in. He's like, no, don't do it. And she goes, all right, have it your way. And she does the whole, you know, the fake gun bang trick. Uh, but even though she didn't shoot the guy, it scared him pretty much to death. Right? Gave him a heart attack. The kid does die. Right? So here's the judge. His kid's dead. He's at the funeral. His ex-wife is blaming him because he wanted to be a judge and she knew this would eventually happen. You know, and he's just so mentally distraught and he's like, you know what, I'm getting payback. So he goes and he gets a gun and he rolls up in the courtroom where she's actually seeming like she's actually sorrowful. It's like the first time you don't see her actually flip out. You know? And he rolls up behind her. I guess it's a different judge now. Tries to make the hit. The guards got him ahead of time, but the gun still went off. And he accidentally killed somebody. An innocent person in the courtroom. Alright, so he is going to jail. And that's what he did to get locked up in the pen. But at the same time after that happened, the white rabbit, she makes her escape from jail. And from there on out, it, he's just talking about him being in jail. He's there with people that he, he he's put in there. They're taking it out on him, right? They're beating him up left and right. You know, and eventually they quit because he wasn't fighting back. You know, he was like, I deserve this this punishment. You know? So basically they, they're concluding the parole hearing and the guy's just like, you know, honestly, you know, do whatever you want, you know. He he's he's mentally done. He's like, you know, we're we're all criminals inside just waiting for an excuse to come out. You know, he's like, peace out, guys. Anyway, the white rabbit shows back up. So he's like, oh, how'd the hearing go? And he's like, what the hell are you doing? He's like, I've been keeping tabs on you. Which one is he? Yeah, so it's the white rabbit pops in. Because I think she really did generally feel bad about the son having a heart attack. But at that moment, lo and behold, somebody comes strolling in. Right? And this is a... Uh, Little redhead guard over here walking in, and the judge is like, "Hey, I don't, I've never seen you before." And he's like, "No, you, you, you wouldn't have seen me before." And basically, all Cleus Cassidy comes in and shows himself as the Carnage, and basically he was saying that, um, you know, you were attached to a symbiote. I came here to retrieve what you got, and that's kind of how it ended. I will say there is this one frame right here. I don't know what they do with Carnage. Why does Carnage have why does Carnage have boobs in his back? Right, he's got these big two lumpy masses on his back. It looks I don't know. I didn't like that, but And you may or may not be able to imagine how this ends, but that's pretty much it. Overall, I thought it was a fun book. It was a fun kind of read. To me, I think it's kind of Alright, this so is what I did not like about the book. I didn't like that they, they attached this to Symbiote Spider-Man, first off, because really, the only thing that has to do with Symbiote Spider-Man are the first two pages. Other than that, it's not even in the Symbiote Spider-Man storyline. Everything else is just a, an absolute carnage tie-in, or spin-off, whatever you want to call it. To me, I don't think the book really added anything to the absolute carnage storyline. And... For for four ninety nine, yeah, that's the one thing that I did not like about the book. But 
with that being said, as a standalone book, I thought it was pretty entertaining. I thought it was cool to get, you know, some, some individual backstory. It just, yeah. I mean, the art was good, had decent dialogue. I just, yeah. It, it could have been, it could have been better. I think if they would have tied it in somehow, some way more with it actually being symbiote Spider-Man, I would have enjoyed this book a lot more. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Absolute Carnage, Symbiote Spider-Man. Now the next one, and this one was my hot book from last week, or what I said on Monday. And this is Something is Killing the Children. Right, it's from Boom Studios. And how did I go with that cover C, the Jenny Friesen cover? I just think it's a sweet looking cover. So, let's jump into it, alright? Basically, it's these kids. They're playing some truth and dare. And there's some banter back and forth, and basically one kid, you know, he says truth, and he's telling about this nightmare that he had. But he says that it wasn't, uh, it said it really did happen. And basically he was saying that he saw this beast um, in his backyard, and that it lives down the ravine. And the one kid who seems kind of the forceful one, and you know, he's, calling, he's calling bullshit, he's like, oh, that's bullshit. And he's like, oh yeah, really? Truth or dare? And I guess he makes the dare to make all these kids go down this ravine. Well, you kind of get a sense of what happens because next thing you know, the kid is actually sitting, uh, what looks like he's being held for interrogation. And he's pretty much saying like, you know, it was just a story, it wasn't real, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, but I heard him, but I heard him screaming. I guess he slipped and fell. And then he heard all of his friends screaming. Right, so you get a sense that something is bad, something bad is happening, or something is killing the children. All right, I thought it was a pretty cool tie-in, or how they did the intro there. So then it cuts to this. I guess two weeks later, you see this little girl. It looks like she's missing legs. It looks like she's missing an arm. She's got an eye patch on. And she's in this little wagon, and all of a sudden, this woman comes strolling out of the woods, all bloody with the knife that is this character right here and you're like huh okay is this the person that's killing the children because she's all covered with blood anyway she sits down next to the girl she gets a glass of water she makes the phone call and she's like yeah it's done so apparently she's there to do a job um, and she gets sent to a new place called Archer's Peak which I guess is the place where the beginning of the story takes place and she's like, all right, I'll be there. Anyway, this kid, this one who just survived whatever just happened, he goes to school, and everybody kind of thinks that maybe he did it. And so, like, the kids are, like, you know, getting on to him. Say, oh, yeah, they want to kiss you, so you, you, you tore their head off and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he's having a bad day, I guess you can say. It leaves him being in the, the principal's office. The principal's like, you know, you should have punched him. You know, the principal doesn't believe this kid is responsible for anything. And the, 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 he's actually cussing and he's crying. He's upset about everything that's going on. And so him and the kid are actually having a moment, which I think is good for both of them in this case. Um, basically, you know, the principal's like, do you want me to call you dad? And he's like, no. I'm just gonna go. Or do you want the day off? And he's like, No, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to English class. We're watching movies. I, I just want to watch a movie. He's like, All right. So then he gets to this bus stop. So our our main female character is on the bus. She arrives to her destination, and she's sitting there and she's looking at all the missing signs. So not only just these kids are going um, have been found dead. There's several others that have been killed. There's several that have gone missing. And so then you kind of get the sense that okay, she's there for she's there for a reason, obviously. And she goes and she tracks down this kid, right? And she's like, hey, you know, I just want to talk to you. And he's like, are you the police? She's like, she's like, do I look like the police? And basically, she says that, hey, I know you said you heard something, but trust me, whatever you did see, I'm not gonna find it weird, like you know you can confide in me and sure enough he does he tells her pretty much the story where he's in this ravine she hears him screaming and then he's finding his friends 
you know, all over the place. One of his friends is torn in half, asking for help. Um, one of them looks like he's got a big chunk taken out of him. The other one almost looks like his skin's been ripped off or something like that. And then I guess this thing right here pops out. All right. And then the woman's like, okay, thank you. She gets on the phone and she's like, this is a class E7. I've got it handled. So basically she's like, hey, you got a monster. I'm here to kill it. And he's like, can I help? And that's how it ends. So it's a, it was a pretty interesting read. Um, I think the artwork was good. I think the way they set this up was good. Um, the one thing, the, the one thing I'm just not a fan of, I'm not a fan of this thing right here. I, I, hopefully this is just a figment of how he imagined it because, I mean, don't get me wrong, if I saw him in the woods, I'd probably be scared shitless, but other than that, from a comic point of view, it just, it didn't seem that intriguing. So yeah, so where the story goes from here, is, is this going to be about... Um, this one female character just in this one place or is this going to be a monster hunter series where she's going all over the place um, that I don't know but overall I generally enjoyed the read and I'll be definitely be picking up issue number two so yeah something is killing the children from boom studios but that's it y'all right, I hope everybody has a great weekend Hope all of y'all got the books that y'all wanted to get this past Wednesday. But let me know what you guys picked up. Let me know what you think about what I picked up. And let me know what you think about these reviews. Did you get them? Did you read them? Let me know what you thought. Um, if you disagree, please let me know that too. You know, I always like to get other people's opinions. So, with that said, everybody, this is Drewski, the Comic Assassin. I wish, hope, hope all y'all have a great weekend. And happy hunting.